Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's things? These are great. It's been a very mellow day so far. Yeah? Yeah. Excellent. So, what about Nuclear Soul? Um, so, where did the album's title come from? It's a lyric from a song titled Track. I think it kind of encompasses the sound of the record as far as it's red hot, it's soulful, it's real gritty rock and roll. And I think it also is talking a little bit about the times we're living in right now. Unbeknownst to us, uh, a lot of the lyrical themes of the record are coming coming to fruition through our um, not-so-bright president that we are dealing with currently in America. Yeah. Does, does it kind of run with that kind of concept in mind then? Or? Yeah, I think the record themes are always kind of sci-fi, and now it's sci-fi is actually starting to become reality, so somewhere in that in that place. So, um, I know that... I'm going to probably say his name. Jean-Paul Gaster. Jean-Paul Gaster. Yeah. The drummer from Clutch. Was he co-produced the record? Yes. Is that right? Yes. yes. So, what was it like kind of having, you know, his ear in whilst you guys were It's always a pleasure to have him around because he's got 25, 35 years of experience playing tunes. So, he's been around it all and seen it all and he's got a incredibly musical ear and it's just it's like having an outside perspective that helps us really draw the best out of ourselves and he's a, big, a massive fan of the band which in turn helps us pull the best stuff out of, out of ourselves well he really helped us a lot in arranging the songs so we really had the vision for the sound of the record but I think he had a, a big grip on where we were placing parts as, as a musician um, where do you kind of come from in terms of influences it's tough. I mean, I love Joe Cocker, Van Morrison as a singer. I love Joe Cocker, Van Morrison, Sam Cooke, Obi Wright, Solomon Burke, um, Ozzy, Phil Lamont. Um, I love Thin Lizzy and Led Zeppelin and uh, Motown and Stax record stuff and uh, Steel Pulse. I like a lot of reggae. <laughs> I'm kind of all over the all over the map. I love soul. I love anything that's got grit to it. Okay. So it's more about kind of emotion sometimes then? It's all emotion. Like if you're singing from... It, it, I love singers and bands that play from the gut. Okay. I don't care how technical you are. There's a few exceptions where like Rush is clearly both. So what about the, the writing process? Is it quite a democratic writing process? Very much so. Uh, there's no one way to do it. We have... Um, someone will bring a song in. Someone will bring a riff in. Sometimes we're just jamming we're out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It, there's no set way to do it. We try to put as much on the table as we can and then see where it goes. So what about the um, album's artwork? Does it sort of refer to this 45th episode? I think you'll have to just interpret that for <laughs> your own your own musings. Okay, yeah, no comment. <laughs> it's it's what art is up to the interpreter. Yeah. <laughs> it almost looks a bit like, like a graphic novel. A few guys in the band are heavily influenced by graphic novels and comic books, and that's a very big part of it. Oh, right. Would you ever do sort of like a, a graphic novel sort When of you buy the deluxe package pre-order for the record, IndieMerch.com slash Lionize, <laughs> it comes with a custom comic book. No way. Yeah. What was that like putting that together? Uh, Hank, the bass player, got together with... Uh, our, our art director and put this whole thing together and it's it's awesome it's not it's just a couple pages mm. but it's cool it's fun to feel it look at it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah well I, I was gonna say like it's because it's quite a death metal kind of festival isn't it right but heavy is not heavy is a vibe heavy isn't a tuning or a, <laughs> a vocal range it's a vibe hearing Richie Haven's open Woodstock with uh, freedom mm -hmm. that's heavy man it's heavy it's not. It's not a, a wearing all black. Yeah. So, in that sense, I think we're heavy enough to, to play with a lot of these bands. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, what about the the band name, Lion Eyes? What what does that kind of? Picked it out of the dictionary. <laughs> we regret it, but we're that's ours now. <laughs> Why do you regret it? Uh, mostly people people ask if we're an Eagles cover band. <laughs> so. So I thought well, that was my next question. Yeah, <laughs> the answer is no. Unless you're paying us a lot of money, then the answer is yes. <laughs> like, um, you know, what's what are Lion Eyes like live? What can people expect? Um, energetic, loose, and we're going to improvise a lot. 
Right. Yeah, we're gonna listen to each other, and we're gonna jam. We're gonna go into different parts, and we're gonna play songs, and we're gonna go into each other and out of each other. And, um, it's gonna be awesome. Ah, Sometimes it works cool. really well. Sometimes it doesn't work. But when it works, it's worth it. Okay. We never play the same set list twice. We we do change it up every night, and I think. Nice. You know, so for some bands it, and people, it works to see the same set every night, but I think that's a, dis a real disservice. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of Phil, Phil Lennon. Um, do you kind of see Thin Lizzy as like a very big inspiration? Yeah, more. the older I get, the more I realize that they, they, also they're a band that dabbled in all sorts of sounds. Folk, Irish, traditional Irish music, mm -hmm. metal, blues, R&B. That's what we want. That's what we want for us. We want to be able to just be lionized, mm -hmm. not lionize the band, blank band. Thin Lizzy, you know, The Police. There's just so many bands that we love that never got pigeonholed. So we're fighting it. We're fighting away from it, being told what we are. We are lionized. Well, uh, thank you ever so much for thank you for everything. Yeah.